uh, video. So today, been to Tesco's, picked up two two litre bottles of Vimto's Real Fruit Squash. Not the um, no added sugar one, because we want sugar. We want to we want to boil the preservatives to the ones that stop the yeast, and then we want to you know we want to turn this into some sort of a wine. So yeah, I've got two of them. I'm doing a 15 litre uh, Vimto again. So yeah, I'm doing a 15 litre brew. Because there's a hell of a lot of sugar in there, I'm only need two litres, two bags of sugar, two kilos. That's all I'm going to need. And finally, I'm going to use Tesco, Tesco's fast action dried yeast. So I've already for washed the bucket out, got the... Um, Whatever you call it, I forgot what you call it. So first things first, get the Vimto into pans. So it starts, because it's all about getting it boiled. Oh, I might not need three pans, I can turn that middle one off. So yeah, there's the first one. It looks like it's going to make like a, a reddish wine. So that'll be interesting. I'll put him on there. Let's turn that middle one off. Save the electricity bill. And then this one. So. Really fruity. So. What I do need to do is get rid of the sugar. I don't know whether to put the sugar, add the sugar into the um, into the juice and do it that way because to be honest, while it's going to be hot anyway, I've got my bloody hell. I'll go that way. So yeah, they're boiling away. So yeah, 85 pence for this. So these were two quid each. So two quid each for these. One pound twenty-five for the sugar. And then 85 pence for the yeast. And apparently this yeast is good and can be used with um, wines and stuff. So, yeah, eight sachets. And, uh, yeah. So apparently this, this can be used with wines. So who knew? You know, it's... Uh, so, just going to let the... Um, so the Vimto is going to boil... Um, the, the Vimto is going to boil now. The thing is, with doing own brew, you have to boil the Vim, You have to boil um, the Vimto boiled to hell to get rid of the preservatives. It is a task. It's not easy, and uh, it's just one of those things. Really, I've got me, me, me stirring paddle. I've also got this. And it's just a case of, um, sadly, it's just a case of waiting now for the for the Vimto to boil away. So on the back of the Vimto, it says here, uh, bursting with the real fruitiness of grapes, raspberries, blackcurrants, and the goodness of vitamin C and D. So, you know, it's, um, add more water for toddlers. So actually, in a lot of ways, you know, this is like one of your five a day. So uh, it's different. It's, um... I can't remember having Vimto for years. So it's, it's going to be an interesting wine and brew. You know, it's, uh, hopefully it tastes okay. And uh, the only problem is now, I've got about five minutes to wait now, or more. I mean, that should make a lovely fruity wine. I can imagine an alcoholic version of that. Wow. Oh yeah, real sweet red wine. I presume, or even a rosé, depending on how it comes out when it goes into the, um, yeah, when it goes into the, um, and ferments. So yeah, this is a, just an experiment. So it, it's costing me four pound, uh, five pound 25, just over six quid. 
15 litres. I could have got another bag of sugar, to be fair, and made it a 23 litre. So, you know, for another pound, I could have made it 23, 24 litres. Don't want to go that far because I don't really need any more wine anyway. It's only an experimental brew. So it's going to be interesting. Um, like I said, I've never used dried yeast before. So that that is going to be the, uh, the really interesting thing. Will it... I've read on the internet that this Tesco's yeast, fast action yeast, is actually as good as wine and beer yeast. So, um, ooh, so there's not too much of a breadiness to the wine. <laughs> Should be an interesting brew. So, good evening. Afternoon, Marva. Afternoon. So yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a Vimto, and I'm wait. I put them on to boil because this is the squash. With the squash, you have to boil the hell out of it to get rid of the preservatives that stop the yeast from working, basically. And um, I can't remember the name of the preservatives that actually do it. Is it benzenate, potassium sorbate? I think they're the ones. Yeah, I think it's them, the preservatives. And once you boil that out and you add your yeast, you can make a brew, a wine. So experimental wine, never never done this before and it's only cost me six quid so if it turns out crap it turns out crap um i don't think it'd be as bad as prune, prune wine but you never know um i mean obviously it's really fruity it's full of sugar so the yeast if the yeast works to the potential that it's supposed to work to it should be a really interesting um um a wine homebrew wine you know it's uh, it's an experiment you know i've not looked at anybody else's um uh, recipes on the internet i've just used what i use normally use for me juice i'm brewing short to 15 because there's already enough sugar in two of these so that's four liters of this and this if you think about fruit juice wines there's a lot of sugar in fruit juice but nothing compared to the sugar amount that's in this yeah it should be interesting yeah and yeah look at both of you um yeah it, uh, I mean, I'm hoping it turns out to be some sort of red wine. Um, totally wacky, you know. And this is what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to do more, um, instead of going too heavy, instead of doing full barrels, because it takes some drinking. And, you know, I'm only one person. Um, so I'm going to do that, 15 litre brews, or even 12, um, if I'm using the other one. I can't see 12 on this, so I'm going to stick to 15. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do shorter brews just 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 to get the experiments out there. Yeah. So with this, with the with the um, with the Vimto, you've got preservatives. So you've got to boil it to get rid of preservatives. So the 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 Vimto is boiling now. Well, starting to. You know, it takes a while, doesn't it? So if you look there, there we go. Two tins. The Vimto is boiling away. Once it's bubbling, then it will be fine. You know, you've bubbled out the preservatives. And, uh, yeah, I've done this before with strawberry cordial. Um, a friend of mine's done it with lime cordial. It's, it's all about getting rid of the preservatives by boiling it. And, uh, obviously, I've done a lot of homebrew over the years. Um, only once have I ever cocked up on a homebrew. Yeah, funnily enough, it was a stout as well. And somewhere along the processes, I didn't do something right, and it was rancid. That's a bin it. I've done grapefruit juice wine. That was harsh. Bloody hell. I've done prune juice wine. That, um, the taste wasn't great, but it had hidden hidden abilities, yeah. If you've got constipation, it's great, because you can get drunk, and, you know, those stories at the same time. All good. Um, cherry juice wine, done that. That turned out amazing. That. You know, for, for a cheapo, because obviously if you can't afford wine kits uh, for whatever whatever you're on, you know, your, your ability. Whatever your ability um, and money, you know, homebrew wine, this, these, these sort of things, it's a great way of getting wine cheap. It's what it's all about, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I like to play around with the kids. I mean, I really like a cherry. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, it's last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I just remembered about last night. And welcome. And 
Yeah, but she, she's got some caking to do in the week. So it's as boring as old eighteen. So that's what I'm talking. Um, I do want to do a, brew, a cherry juice wine brew again this year because that, that was exquisite, that was. And red grape juice, if you go to Sainsbury's, they sell red grape juice. And that, yeah, it's proper sugar, yeah. But you have to boil the vimter, uh, the preservatives out. So I've got, I've got two pans and they're boiling away. And I am going to add the sugar because I've got two kilos of sugar as well. So, wow, it's going to create something interesting. I will get a, a reading. I'll get the hydrometer out of the shed later. And I will get a reading, uh, an initial reading, just to see how potent, how much sugar is in it, at, you know, on day one. And then do a reading at the end and, uh, you know, use the calculations to see how it's going to go. That yeah, should be interesting, you know, it's, uh, it's got a lovely smell to it. Um, a pomegranate juice, that was a nice juice wine. They made a lovely... Uh, blonde, white wine from milk. Oh, that's new. That's different. Wow. I do fancy doing a sake, you know, with the uh, rice. Rice. Yeah, my R's and W's. <laughs> Yeah, I do fancy doing a sake. I've done elderflower wine. That turned out amazing. Um, so you get you go and get the elderflower. Dirty job washing it out. And the bloody bugs. And I would say, if anybody does an elderflower wine, get a pair of tights. Wash it out. Get a pair of tights. Obviously, no. Not, you, not your wife's um, old ones. Or unwashed ones. Put the elderflower in the tights. Shove it in the tights. And then you don't get... Then you're not having to do a load of... Um, sieving later on but elderflower you don't even need to use yeast for elderflower so you go and get the elderflower uh, a bit of lemon a bit of lemon flavoring would help probably could yeah i think most of you i've done i've done wines from ju uh, cordial before and um, but i've also had juice with it this time no juice so it's just vimto so be interesting it's all an experiment and yeah, as for the elderflower, it turned out amazing. Do you? Oh, yeah, I'm not so sure I want to go down that road. I want something that's cheap and cheerful and easy because the majority of people out there want it as easy as they can get. You know, you don't want it too hard. Otherwise, what's the, you know, you might as well go and get a bloody wine kit. So yeah, cherry wine is amazing from, from juice. Um, I've done apple wine. That was okay. Orange wine, depending on the brand of orange juice, you know, don't mix up your brands because you get you can get a right funkiness. Um, and obviously, go for the smooth, not the not the stuff with the bits in, because otherwise you'll end up with lots of bits at the bottom. It's not really an issue because you 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 sieve it out, but um, yeah, you don't want it. So it's but starting to boil now. I'm going to give it about five or ten minutes to boil. And I'm going to add the sugar as soon as it starts to boil, just to um, add the sugar to it, get it to dissolve, because my fermentation bucket is this one. So putting the sugar in there is an absolute bitch. And uh, yeah, hence why I've also got a jug, so I can scoop out the majority into the jug, pour it in, and then use the uh, pans to pour it in, he says, hopefully. Never easy, never easy. What I really should get is one of them where it's already got a, a lip on the front where you can pour it and, uh, it, uh, you know, you work with what you work with, can't you? Yeah, with these sort of things. So, they're starting to boil, thank God. So it's a cheap and cheerful kit. I mean, it should uh, develop into some sort of uh, nice red, fruity red wine. I reckon a very sweet red wine, depending if the, the yeast does its job. Now I was reading on the internet with regarding to yeasts. And um, so Tesco's fast action dried yeast. And apparently this, from what I've read, works brilliantly with um, homebrew beers and wines. So 85 pence for eight.
chat. I don't know, right? Yeah. So I've, that's one I've not done. A friend of mine has done it. And uh, I mean, the older flower wine, that turned out like, sh um, it was like sherry to start off with. But it's sparkling. And in the end, it turned out to be quite a nice sparkling white wine. Um, you know, adding a bit of lemon to it did help though, because it, it took off the blandness of the older flower. But as cheap kits, as cheap, as cheap um, making of wines to do, it's probably the cheapest you could do. I mean, what? Um, elderflower's free. Two or three bags of sugar. You know, you're looking at about five or six quid all in. And you can't fault it for that price. So it's boiling away. It's a bit boring watching it because it's so slow. But uh, I should have, I should have got it boiling before I'd even started. But hey ho, if you, this is, there's a process. You know, if someone else tries this. They need to see what the process involves, even if it is mind-numbingly boring. So, go. And obviously, you have to boil the L out of it. That's another good way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. See, there's so many hacks for homebrew. At some stage again this year, I'm going to do another rhubarb wine. I did a rhubarb stout last year. I got Wilco's. Wilco's kits are amazing because their core kits, you know, the, the £12 ones that you add a bag of sugar to, they're amazing because you can just um, play around with them kits massively. No, 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 no beer on the go. No, no. I did a beer with you earlier. No. Wife's in the other room. So if I've got a beer this time of the day, I'll get a I'm getting married that. It's not worth the hassle. So, sneak a bit of you later. Hey, hey. So, yeah. Still waiting for it to boil. God, dear. But whatever it's doing, you know, the more you, the more you boil it, the more you get rid of the preservatives, you know, and uh, the less chance of it failing. The less chance. There's always a chance, obviously. You know, that's, that's always with any experiment but I have done cordials before I do want to try and find a, a decent cherry cordial and do a, a cherry wine or even a cherry beer but again boil the other get rid of the preservatives and add the cherry flavoring to um, to like a stout or even an, an imperial stout now that would be something lovely smell the, 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 the fruitiness is amazing. I mean, what is it? Grapes, raspberries, blackcurrants. So, um, you know, in a red wine, you'll get that anyway. So, uh, I reckon it's going to make a nice sweet red wine, if it, if it works. So, kind of taking one for the team in some aspect. So, yeah, both starting to boil now. So, rather a slow process. Now, I would normally chuck that into the bucket and do it, but because I'm boiling air anyway, I might as well use the tins to dissolve the, you know, use the two brews to dissolve the sugar anyway. And then do a bit of stirring. And like the wife says, oh, you're good at stirring. Well, yeah, <laughs> these things. So, start stirring, and funnily enough, because it's red hot and it's boiling, the sugar's disappearing it's at a rate of knots. I'm using two kilos of sugar, so I'm doing a 15 litre brew, two kilos of sugar, bearing in mind that the, um, the Vimto is going to have a lot of sugar in it. Making the right noise as well. Let me take the phone down. I'll wait till I've, I'll wait till I've stirred it first. See, the great thing is that that's just saved me a job. But, you know, you've got to have decent sized pans. If you've got little pans, it's not going to be an easy job. Um, obviously, the pans have got to be so sterile. 
um, as with all home brews, for, for anybody who home brews, you know that cleanliness is king. Because you're going to be drinking that at some stage, well, hopefully. One never knows. Yeah, Vimto sugar, yeast. You'll see in the weeks to come. So yeah, don't get the reduced sugar one because what's the point? You know, you want it, you want the cordial that's got the sugar in it. It's at two quid at the moment at Tesco's for a two litre. So I bought four litres. And um, yeah, two bags of sugar. Because I, th I thought to myself, I only want to do 15 litres. So two bags of sugar is perfect. If I was doing 23, 24 litres, I'd use another two bags of sugar. But it's an experiment, so I didn't want to go too crazy. You know, I've learned that lesson with crew mine. So I'm just using this, Tesco's, fast action dry yeast. I'm not even using the wine yeast. It's, it's 85 pence for eight sachets. I've chucked two sachets in at a time because at that price, it's not costing me. Over. And uh, on the internet, they say on the internet, the reviews are that it's really, really good for both wine and beer to use as a yeast. So, bubbling away really nicely now, I want it is at least. So I'll take the phone, I'll take it off again. So yeah, both bubbling away nicely. I'm gonna give them a good five minutes of bubbling because I want it to bubble the hell out of that Vimto. And then it's just a case of adding it, hopefully, without spilling it down myself. That's going to be interesting. In fact, I might use the smaller jug. <laughs> yeah, that'll be easier. Because uh, there's the tricky part of getting it from the pan into the chuffing bucket, which is here. And uh, I don't want it going down me. And if I ruin the kitchen with Vimto, the wife's not going to be pleased. You know, these, these things happen. And uh, yeah. Although I'm cooking anyway, so in a bit, so cooking a nice Irish fry up. So that'd be good. Might have to have a glass of uh, Imperial Stout whilst doing it, as you do. So yeah, the one on the back's bubbling away nicely. The one on the front, not quite so much. But that's okay, because I can use the one off the back first. It's going to take a minute or two. And the, the aroma coming through, through it, it's, it's absolutely lovely, the aroma. Um, it's definitely got some potency to it. Is it going to work? You, know, you never know. There's, there's no... Um... I have seen that someone's done a Vimto wine. Not following their instructions. I'm just, just basically doing it myself. You know, getting the cordial. As long as you boil that cordial, it should get rid of the preservatives. And that's what's all key. So, another stir, just to make sure there's no sugars. Because the last thing we want is any, un, you know, un undissolved sugar that's it that's perfect that is this one's on the right go slow and it's amazing i think there was some undissolved sugar at the bottom of the big pan so that's boiling away absolutely lovely now looks it looks like it's going to be a lovely red wine good afternoon barry how are you so yeah, I'm doing um, a Vimto wine, a cheeky Vimto, yeah. Well, it will be cheeky because, um, you know, a Vimto wine from Homebrew. So cheap and cheerful. Something, you know, it, it's all about experimenting, isn't it? You know, it's, um, it's all just cheeky little homebrews that may or may, may or may not work. Right, the one on the back now has been bubbling away for long enough. So, oh God, it weighs a ton as well. So there it is, all bubbling away, beautiful. Now the tricky part. I reckon you could probably get anything up to 16%. Been on the Vimto, yeah. So I'll move that one to the back. Turn that one off, right. Here's the fun part. Because, you know, getting it into the fermentation bucket Don't try and pour it from the pan in. You know, you've got to be so careful. Oh. My kitchen's not really set up for videos, but, um, but yeah, there we go. So. Sounds like 
like somebody's on the toilet, to be fair, but I know. I'm going to pour the fifth, the, the uh, both pans in and then top it off with cold water. Uh, check the temperature. Because one must remember that you don't want it above, I think it's, you know, 20, 22 degrees centigrade. So. Right, here we go. This is where it always goes tits up, but hello. I'm trying not to. And uh, I did it. It looks like the sauna, doesn't it? It's bloody. Yeah, the funnel. The funnel really helps, you know. So that's one. Yeah, it's like a sauna in it. It's really warm at the moment. So that's number one done. I've just got to wait for number two. It's, it's not quite bubbled away enough yet. So obviously that's a bigger pan. So yeah, we're already, that's, that's neon two litres in. Absolutely red hot as well. So always be careful, you know, if you're in the kitchen, boiling hot, you know, I don't need to tell people that, but uh, yeah, last thing you want to do is scold yourself and uh, cause an accident. So that's half the job in. Just waiting for this to boil up now. It's, 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 it's red hot, but it's not actually boiling. And to get rid of them bloody preservatives, you need it boiling. And then it should make, um, hopefully, give it a week or two. I'm gonna leave it in the house where it's warm. I'm not taking it to the shed, the beer room. It's not worth the hassle. Um, it's not warm enough. You know, if it was in late April, early May, yeah, always in the beer room. And, oh, it's boiling there. Bubbling, ah, bless you. Two or three minutes of bubbling, that should do it. What I would say, if anybody's going to think about doing the same, is definitely boil the hell out of it. But obviously there's, there's a balance in that between boiling it too long and starting to lose sugars, I suppose, being boiled out. But obviously you need to boil them preservatives out. That's what's key. And then, um, you know, we'll add cold water. Hopefully it's luke, it comes to a lukewarm temperature. So I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna add about 10 or 11 litres of cold water. So that should, by the time it gets to 15, get the temperature lukewarm. As long as, it, as long as, you don't have to, you don't have to be, as long as you touch it and it feels, you know, lukewarm, that's all, so that's good enough. You can get a thermometer out and do it properly, but um, if you really, really want to, but as long as it's lukewarm, that's all that really matters. So 28 minutes in, wow. And, uh, Taking a bit of time, this is. What I should have done is boiled it first, but uh, there's a process and uh, I'll give an um, update. Tastes nice. It's not bad, actually. And that's what <laughs> The process, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll um, do some every other day videos to see how it's going. And the one good thing is as well, and there's the thing, Event, if it's only 15 litres on here, then if it does bubble up like an absolute swine with all that sugar, then it's not going to um, overflow the fermentation bucket. That's always something to remember. You know, sometimes you're better off going a bit short than getting right near the brim and then waking up in the morning to a, a mess. And you know, I've done it so many times where I've got crap all over my floor and the wife's not been overly keen on that, obviously. So this is taking a bloody age to boil, this is. But we'll keep at it, because it's it can't be long now. Yeah, it, it is bubbling away. I just want it to bubble away a bit faster. You know how it is. It's, um, you, you look and you think, oh, for God's sake, hurry up. But that's homebrew for you. So, talking about homebrew, moving forward this year. Um, I definitely want to do a barley wine. Definitely want to do this. Uh, Love Brewing's Beer Works range. They've got a fantastic, um, it's a dark strawberry beer. 
and I think it's only about five or six percent, so it's not strong. But you know, five percent is worth a point. Uh, Twenty-four quid for the kit, forty pints, so sixty pence. Um, sixty pence a pint. So you know, for that price, it's it's worth a gamble. And uh, I want to do about four or five kits. Um, am I going to do a lager this year? No, I've done lagers now. I've had enough lager. I want to do a Belgian beer kit moving forward. I think that'll be interesting. Definitely want to try and get hold of a plum beer kit. And I think the Belgian ones are the closest you're going to get to some sort of plum beer. And in fact, I might even get old email Love Brewing and just see if I can get hold of uh, the boss Richard and see if he can get a plum porter kit out because I think that, especially a Swedish one, would sell amazing. Something about 7%. <sighs> It'd be such a big seller. When you look at some of the best beers out there, King Goblin, um, the likes of Fuller's Golden Pride, if you could make kits that emulate them down, you know, down to the last iota, it would be a very interesting kit moving forward, you know, and it would sell a hell of a lot, especially with the own group community. So, good evening, good afternoon, Craig. Um, doing the old Vimto wine. So, eventually, fingers crossed, because one never knows, it's supposed, it's got grapes, raspberries and blackcurrants, and it's sweet. So it should make a nice red wine. I'm using four litres of, of the ju the cordial. I'm boiling the bloody hell out of it. Uh, I've got two kilos of sugar. And then I've got some Tesco's fast action dried yeast. I'm not even using wine yeast. I'm, this is an experiment. And um, luckily, at half an hour in, the, the Vimto is bubbling away quite nicely now. So. Uh, I'm just going to give it another couple of minutes because it's all about getting rid of the preservatives. Um, if you're going to use a cordial to make a home brew wine, you have to get rid of preservatives. Your juice wines, you don't need to because juice wines haven't got preservatives, most of them at least. Juice from concentrate. But these, these fellas, yeah, yeah, it's got preservatives on the back. And you can see there the sodium benzate, benzonate, and the potassium sorbate, both of them stop um, stop the yeast from doing its job, which is turning this into a, some sort of wine. So, and uh, cheeky Vimto down the shed. <laughs> it's something I've wanted to do for a while. I'm only doing 15 litres. If I was doing 24 litres, it would be another two kilos. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. So that is bubbling away quite nicely now, which is good because I need to sit down and knackered. All this yakking. And uh, yeah, so you can see it's been bubbling away properly now for a few minutes. Uh, where's the, there it is. And you do need it to bubble the hell. I do apologise for the scruffy kitchen, but hey, I've not all rich. <clears throat> So yeah, that's bubbling away nicely. Um, I've already dissolved the sugar into the Vimto. While it's bubbling, you might as well. Because if you try and put it in this fermentation bucket, you pour the sugar in, you pour the hot water in, and what happens? So right swine of a job. So, better, obviously. Like I always say, it's got to be all be washed out, it's got to be sterilised, rinsed, if you use that sort of steriliser. I use um, Aldi's. So, or is it little? I don't know, one of the two. Yeah, I'll just use that. A couple of capfuls of that to sterilise. Jobs are good. And give it a wash out first, then sterilise it, and then give it a rinse. So, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for a beer now. Can't be drinking in the kitchen, then. A bollocking. So, I'm happy with that now. So, that now could be turned off because. I've, done, I've been here long enough and I'm starting to get absolutely bored of doing it. So lovely. Now the tricky thing is getting the chuffing Vimto 
into the thing. And I'm not daft enough to try and pour the old pan in. So. Hence why I've got a little jug that does the trick for me. Obviously, get the drips off, pour it in. You're gonna lo lose a few drips, but you just wipe it up afterwards. It's not really an issue. Once I've got it about three quarters of the way down, then I'll, uh, I'll worry then about trying to do the pan. But I'm not daft enough to try and... That's it. I'm about three quarters of the way down now, get the most of the drips off. Don't want to lose all this uh, cordial. Oh, I'll put that to one side. Right, here it goes. Here goes the fun element. Does he make himself look a cunt? Well, I think so. The answer? No. As you can see, absolutely no sugar elements at the bottom. You don't want that sugar. So now, it's just a case now of using uh, a bigger jug and get it up to 15 litres. We're getting to the exciting part. Well, the exciting part is drinking it. The smell's absolutely lovely. Wash that, don't need that now. Right. Is this going to work? I hope so. Otherwise, I've just took up your time and my time. At the worst, I'll go and get some wine yeast. Later on, when I nip down the shed and find the um, hydrometer, I'll take a meter reading just to see how it's looking. So we're already up to 10 litres, so only a couple of minutes more now, and that'll be it. Although it's quite warm. So I may have to do the yeast off camera. Right, one more litre. So there we are, 15 litres in there. Oh, it's quite heavy as well. There we go. So, get a stir around. Um, now it's a stir around, it's actually cooled down quite nicely. Quite deceiving to start off with. Let me just wipe off all the uh, the juice. There we go. That's it. Get rid of the sticky. Right. And uh, because I can never find a chuffing pair of scissors, you don't see this on other beer review channels, do you? But um, there we go. So. Just smells like any other yeast. So, yeast in the top. I'm not gonna do anything with the yeast because it's pointless. Uh, when I transfer it to the dining room, if you was gonna leave it in situ, I'd give it a quick stir. But because 
Um, I'm just I'm going to transfer it. It's going to wibble wobble about anyway. And um, yeah, we'll see in about two weeks' time how it progresses. I will. Every two or three days, I'll give an update. As soon as I know it's doing something. If it's a total failure, I don't know. <laughs> I might not bother. Swirl around and uh, we'll see if it works or if I have to go and buy some wine yeast and just be in tight. But, uh, that's it. Nicely sealed with an airlock, and that's it for this experiment. Will it work? Who knows? And uh, thank you for everyone watching. You know, sorry for taking your time up. Um, if it turns out nice, it should turn out to be a rather sweet red wine. Should. One never knows. And I'm worried about the yeast, but we'll see. Thanks for watching. Cheers all.